All right, everybody, welcome back to the Bulletproof Handyman Business Channel today. Uh, we've got somewhat of a scary topic to talk about. However, we also have some solutions to talk about as well, so don't get too scared. Uh, but the gist of things is, is it seems like a lot of handyman jobs are drying up, and I mean across the board, across the country, everywhere I look. Uh, there are some reasons for this we're going to go into, but like I said, there are also some solutions to go into. So don't start freaking out and dropping your prices and begging for work. That's not going to be necessary. Uh, but let's talk about what's happening, what I'm seeing anyways. Uh, number one, I'm seeing other YouTubers who are handymen. A lot of them now are talking about how they've seen a dramatic reduction in their workload. And this isn't a slow reduction over time. It, it seems to be a recent modern thing like in the last three months especially maybe in the last six months vaguely but especially in the last three months I've been seeing a lot of it so one of the things I'm seeing is I know a lot of tradesmen here I don't know a whole lot of other handymen except the ones that have worked for me briefly and then moved on uh, but I know a lot of tradesmen who are specialized in their trades and they're working on new home builds they're working on remodels they're working in rich neighborhoods they're working in places that you would expect to see uh, you you would expect them to be very busy all the time and in the past they always have been again like six months ago most of these guys that I subcontracted my specialty workout to like my drywall guy my tile guy usually they were extremely busy and their prices reflected that and it was hard to get them to come and do some work for me because they always had so much work lined up now all of a sudden they're starting to call me not all of them but quite a few of them are starting to call me and say hey man I've got some free time if you have any work and what that tells me is they're seeing a reduction in requests uh, the other thing I'm seeing is a lot of you guys from this channel a lot of my subscribers who watch all of my videos that communicate me with me on a relatively frequent basis via email or via comments on this channel I'm seeing a lot of y'all talking about how either you're switching over to property management or you're starting to because your homeowner base has dried up or you're staying with homeowners but you're asking for advice on how to get more work because they've been seeing a slowdown as well and then finally some really personal anecdotes for me is my phone calls have actually slowed down now luckily I don't rely on phone calls from homeowners for my work. I work for property management companies, which means when homeowners call, I'm just always telling them no. And I mean always telling them no. I just don't do any work for any homeowners. But it used to be I'd get a call a day. A again, the timing seems to be pretty spot on across the board. Six months ago, I was getting calls almost every day. I have old Craigslist ads, old Facebook ads my name and number are up at random hardware stores my past tenants that I did work for have kept my number and handed it out to people they know so I used to get calls from homeowners on almost a daily basis sometimes even a couple a day and the solution every time was just to say I'm sorry but I only work for property management companies but what's concerning is that those calls have slowed down and even though I don't need them that does tell me that the market overall is slowing down because if they're not calling me they're probably not calling you either so overall I think it's safe to say there's an issue right now with the economy resulting in a lot less handyman jobs being available so let's talk about what's driving this number one is inflation I think this is absolutely obvious as I was saying before I think we can all look back just a few years like two to three years and we can remember you know I can remember paying a dollar ninety nine a pound for hamburger meat I used to buy a uh, T-bone for 2.99 a pound. My gas was $1.80 a gallon. Now my gas is like $4 a gallon. The T-bones are $7 a pound. The hamburger meats $3 a pound. All the groceries are more expensive. Uh the electric bill, even the rates at the electric company have gone up. And I'm also looking around and I'm seeing because I work for property management companies, my renters are telling me that all of their rents are going up the prices of used cars guys oh my god just a few years ago you could buy a little junker that even had AC for 1500 bucks any day of the week you could just go on Facebook Craigslist wherever you want and you could buy some old junker vehicle that'll get you by for 1500 bucks I've been looking recently because my son needs a new vehicle because his uh, threw a rod 
I can't find anything for under 3000 that runs. I mean, that's a doubling of the price just of used cars. Uh, and then finally, so those are the two big ones is inflation and uh, also interest rates are up. Interest rates meaning, and that's whether you're buying a car, whether you're buying a house, when the Federal Reserve raises their interest rates, what that means is banks, when a bank wants to loan you money, they borrow the money from the Federal Reserve. They go to the Federal Reserve, and it's not quite this simple, but they basically go to the Federal Reserve and say, hey, we want $500 million dollars to loan out and the Federal Reserve loans it to the bank at a 1% rate or a half a percent rate or 3%, whatever their percent is, they loan it to the bank. And then the bank adds to that percentage and turns around and loans you the money. So when the interest rates federally go up, everything becomes more expensive. Uh, it also applies to small businesses. For example, if you're a small business and you need a small business loan, it's now harder and more expensive to get that loan. So if you can't get the loan, you can't grow your business or you can't purchase the equipment that's going to make you more efficient, bring your prices down. And the end result of that is that you end up not being competitive in the market and you go out of business. So you have a lot of small businesses failing, a lot more people looking for jobs, even wages are starting to get driven down now. Uh, AI's taken over a little bit, so a lot of people, I have software engineers especially emailing me all the time because they're jumping into the handyman business because there are no more software, no more like base level software engineer jobs. Now they're all higher level, but that's beside the point. Finally, there's this uh, housing bubble, except I'm telling you guys, this is not a bubble. If you look at BlackRock, State Street, and Vanguard, they own everything now, and I mean everything, and they are starting to own the entire real estate market. Just as a little number to throw out there for y'all, just so you know, more than half of all new home builds this year, right now, that permits have been taken out for, more than half of them are new home builds that are going to be rentals. So the, the housing market has gotten so bad, or so good, depending on whose perspective you're looking at it from, but the housing market has gotten to the point that half the new home builds are going for rentals. So this leaves us in a position now where nobody has money. Everybody's broke, everybody's scared, nobody has money, and nobody's requesting handyman work. Or if they are, they don't want to spend very much money on that work. So what do we do about that? And I have some solutions for you guys. It's the reason I created my business the way I created my business. And once I figured it out, it's the reason I created this channel. So here's what we do. We're going to look at, let's look at, I made a little chart here. I'm not going to show you the chart. I'm just kind of reading off of it. But if you're a handyman, uh, generally what that means is you're not specialized in a specific trade. You're an all-around handyman who can do a lot of things. And you're typically not trying to do a full roof on a house, like a full roof replacement or a full interior floor replacement. You're usually not installing all brand new kitchens, like demoing all the way down to the walls and putting a whole new kitchen in. As a handyman, you're doing smaller repairs, and some of those may not be all that small, but still, you're not doing whole home remodels as a handyman, generally speaking. So you've got two different types of clients, let's say, two, two different types of uh, handyman jobs, actually. There are optional jobs and there are not optional jobs. An optional job would be you want to hang a flat screen TV. Well, you don't have to hang a flat screen TV. Your family's going to get by just fine without hanging a flat screen TV or putting up shelves or carrying boxes from the house to the shed. Those are optional jobs. So when people have high incomes and good prospects for the future, they don't mind paying somebody to do those optional jobs. But when you're scared and there's no money and inflation is going insane and everything costs you more than it used to and you don't know what your future holds, all you know is your paycheck to paycheck, you're barely scraping by and your rent keeps going up or your mortgage keeps going up, what you do know is that you probably need to be careful about spending your money. So you're going to stop spending on those optional things. And a lot of that's what we're seeing now. Now, a lot of y'all are not just doing the teeny tiny repairs. A lot of y'all are doing bigger repairs, let's say for wealthy clientele. And during good times, that's great because a wealthy client whose stocks are doing good, whose investments are doing good, and whose career prospects look promising, they don't have any problem paying you $1,000 a day to come do very good work on their house. A lot of y'all have built very nice businesses out of that. 
But the issue is, is with wealthy people, they're a great market. But most people who have wealth, they have some small piece of their wealth in the bank as disposable income that they can spend. But the vast majority of their wealth is tied up in the value of their home or in their investments or in their 401ks or in stock options that they can't execute or cash out on or that they don't want to execute or cash out on. So when the market does bad, they may have, let's say your client has a net worth of $500,000. Well, a client with a net worth of $500,000, almost certainly $450,000 or more is tied up in stocks and stock options and investments and bonds and things like that, or their actual home, the value of their home that they live in. But that's not accessible cash. So the cash that they do keep accessible to them, they have to be more careful when they where they spend it when they see all of these things coming down. The value of their home is going up, but the values of their stocks is going down. And everything's becoming more expensive, even to them. Everything they want to buy is more expensive, just like everything you and I want to buy is more expensive. So what do we do about this? I do have... I don't want to call it a simple solution. There's nothing simple about this. This is this takes all of my time all day every day. It's a very complex field, but there is a solution, guys. The solution is you want to work. So we just talked about the types of jobs, right? You've got optional jobs and not optional jobs. And then down this other column, you've got poor clients, medium income clients, and rich clients. So where do you want to work? Well, you don't want to work on non you don't want to work on optional jobs. If you're working on optional jobs, when the economy gets bad, people start opting out of paying you to do those jobs. If somebody has three bathrooms in their house, or just make it two bathrooms, if you've got two bathrooms and one toilet stops working, that's optional whether you fix that toilet. I've seen plenty of places where people just shut the water off to that one toilet and everybody starts using the other one. Now later on, if the economy recovers, of course, when they start feeling more confident, they're going to hire somebody to fix that other toilet. But when times are tough and times are tough right now, people stop spending that money. So you don't want poor clients and you don't want optional jobs. What you want is medium to high income clients and jobs that are not optional. And the secret here is this is for me the basis of Bulletproof, the basis of the title of this channel and the basis of really my business model. And when I say Bulletproof, of course, Bulletproof doesn't mean you can't die. If you shoot somebody wearing a Bulletproof vest with a cannon, it's going to go right through them and they're going to die, right? But you can shoot somebody with a bulletproof vest five or six times with a 9mm handgun and it's going to hurt, but they're going to survive. So how do we become bulletproof? Becoming bulletproof is working for property managers. Now this isn't only property managers. To some extent, this could be real estate agents and new home builders and other businesses. You could even go into commercial work. But the route that I found was property managers because here's the secret with property management. All jobs are non-optional when you're working for a property manager. All jobs are non-optional. If a renter has two toilets and one of those toilets stops working, the property manager does not have the option of telling the tenant to shut off the water to that toilet and just stop using it from now on. They must, by law, fix that toilet. If a ceiling fan in a bedroom suddenly goes out and the lights won't turn on. If you're a homeowner, regardless of your income, you don't have to replace that ceiling fan today. You can just plug in a lamp and you can use a lamp in that room for the next six months. And then maybe again, when consumer confidence is a little higher, then those consumers will start spending more disposable income, getting the ceiling fan fixed. But a property manager doesn't have that option. A property manager, if a light's not working, if the stove's not working, if the AC's not working, the plumbing, Anything in that house, if a door won't shut properly or if a door won't latch or lock properly, that has to get fixed. It's not optional. So there is no swing with the market up and down when you're working for property managers because none of the work is optional. And here's the best thing, too, is most of these properties are owned by people with a higher relative net worth. They're, they're relatively wealthy people. Not all of them are rich but they're doing well enough that they can afford to put the money into their property to get it fixed. And they're also, of course, legally required to. Therefore, they're going to. Your work 
to the extent that it may rise or fall, it does not rise or fall with the economy or with the housing market or with consumer confidence or with the unemployment rate or inflation. It doesn't care about recessions. It doesn't care about depressions. If a toilet breaks, it's got to be fixed. And guess what, guys? Most of y'all, maybe not y'all who watch my channel routinely, but most handymen out there have a disdain for property managers. And there are some good reasons for that. It's because they had very bad experiences, and you can and will have bad experiences if you work for property managers. However, because most handymen don't like them, once they get that bad taste in their mouth, they stay away and they swear them off forever. Similar to how I've sworn off homeowners. But here's the thing, because they've sworn them off forever, there's less competition over here. Don't get me wrong, there's still a lot of competition, but it's less competition. Nobody in this particular world is out here charging $30 an hour because you very quickly find out when you start getting work orders piled up and multiple property managers expecting you to get them done quickly, the stress that that puts on you, the logistics that you have to be able to sort of Work, work out and figure out to make sure that the most important jobs do get done right away and the medium importance jobs still get done within let's say a week and even the low priority jobs still are going to have to get done within a few weeks at the most to keep those property managers all happy to manage all of your cash flow in and out your inventory your tooling your scheduling it becomes very difficult and the types of people who can handle that typically are the types of people who can figure out very quickly that they bring a really significant value. So you can charge over here minimum $100 an hour. And I know this is not rare for working for homeowners either. In fact, I have handy men that email me and tell me they're charging $250 an hour or $150 an hour, $200 an hour. The rates are different all over the country. But my point is you can charge as much or more you get way more business, but most importantly, guys, because there's no more jobs all of a sudden, because this handyman work is drying up, what I can tell you from my own personal experience right now today, I have too much work. I have always had too much work. It is so rare for me to start running out of work, to, to even get the slightest bit of anxiety about my workload. My anxiety is always just the fact that there are more jobs to be done than I have time to do. So I have my son working with me now. I have a couple handymen that I met through this channel that happen to be in Tucson that are doing work for me now. I have some tradesmen that do work for me and even with other people to assign this work out to. And even with me charging premium rates, I never run out of work. In fact, right now, I'm on the verge of firing my biggest client because, and this is one of the things you'll hate about property management, they take too long to pay me. They're a net 30 company, which means they have 30 days. They almost never take 30 days. It's usually within a week, but sometimes there will be really big jobs where I expect that payment to come through at about the same rate as everything else they pay me, and then they end up waiting three weeks, and I've got you know, a thousand dollars worth of materials and a couple thousand dollars worth of labor tied up into that job. It's not good. So you do have to learn how to vet them. You have to learn how to manage them. You have to be willing to do what I'm going to be doing soon and you have to be willing to fire them. But before you fire them, you need to replace them with a new property manager. But that's the solution, guys. I don't want y'all getting scared because uh, shit's really weird right now. Like really, really weird. You know, we've got Ukraine, we've got Israel, We've got insane inflation. We've got other things that probably sound more political that I'm just not going to bring up on this channel because it's not the appropriate venue for it. But the world is getting really, really weird. Things are getting scary. People are scared. Jobs are going away. Income is going down. Inflation is going up. Find yourself some property managers. And just so you all know, if you watch my channel... This whole channel is about how to navigate this world. If you want to find property managers, you can go binge watch all my videos and figure out how to do that. I'm also starting a master class really soon, and I'm talking about I'm hard at work on this every night right now for whether it's 45 minutes or three hours, however much time I can put into it. I'm getting this master class planned out, and it's going to show you. And by the way, it's a free master class. I'm not charging anything for it, but it's going to guide you step by step 
into how to start your business and how to get into the property management world. And I'm telling y'all, it's way safer over here. The reason this channel is named Bulletproof is because I want to be able to absorb some hits. And one hit that I know from experience working with homeowners is that as the economy changes, so does your workload. And I need a steady, stable income for me and my family. So if y'all want to go check out the description, there's lots of links to lots of products and services that I find useful for my handyman business right now that I use. Um, and you can also find something for sort of reserving your spot for the master class. But I just want you guys to know there are solutions. You don't have to lower your prices. That's not a solution. Dropping your prices to keep your clients happy is going to result in nothing more than just having clients that expect lower prices from you. So when everything gets more expensive, it is not the handyman's job to be less expensive. While everybody else charges more, it's not your job to charge less to accommodate everybody else charging more. When the world gets more expensive, guess what? So does the handyman, and that's okay because you're going to be working for property managers, and they don't have a choice. They have to hire you. They have to get the work done. And to the extent everyone else is out there working for homeowners and not working for property managers, there is a place for you here. So I encourage you all to watch my videos, figure out how to get some property managers, learn what they need and how to take care of them, and start getting your handyman business a lot more stable over time. Uh, otherwise, I hope you all are out there killing it, and I'll see you on the next one.